Now, the reason I'm citing this is simple. The world is in darkness. The Bible said in Isaiah 60 from verse 1, it said, Arise, shine. It said, For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He's telling you that because if you don't take the responsibility to arise, your environment is doing something that you don't know. It said, Darkness shall be upon the earth, and gross darkness the people. So those who don't rise, the environment will teach them and train them in the way of darkness. So their outcomes will become according to the dictates of the vibrations of darkness. Because darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness shall cover the people. You came on, on, you came on campus with your admission letter innocently, hoping you will graduate with first class. Some of you, it was from the matriculation night that you began to sense the vibrations of darkness. And what has happened to you, you will need rays of light with sufficient energy to alter that mutation that has already been done. And so a conference like this is designed to expose you to radiation, radiation of different frequencies that will reprogram you and to re-engineer you. So that which darkness has done will be reverted. But when that happens, there is a step you need to take as the first sign that you have risen. And that step is called repentance because your thought patterns, your actions, your philosophies and your ideologies are all a function of the orientations you have received from darkness. You may not even be aware. Until light comes, you won't know what darkness was doing. And so when a man begins to interact with light, the first thing that happens to him is to repent. A new philosophy must be given. A new ideology must be given. A new way must be developed. I heard one of the teachers said, if you want to manifest the acts of the apostles, you must know the ways. Your, your, your reconfiguration into the ways of the apostle is what we call repentance. Because the moment repentance is done, light begins to flood in like a river. So what hinders light from coming in is the ways of darkness that we have held on to. The moment we let go of it and turn back to light, it begins to flood in. And so repentance has two layers. The first layer is to turn away from. And that's where a lot of people stop. You turn away from, then you turn on to. That's why the Bible said, looking away onto Jesus, then he becomes the author and the finisher of your faith so it's not enough to look away when you look away you look on to so if you don't make your decision to repent to turn away from the whole subject will be theological you won't touch the light that we speak of i wish i had time to talk to you about the essence of light and the character of light if you see the excellency of light you will know why you need to quickly repent because those who carry light there is an authority they, they operate in. They dominate the world because the instrument for dominion is light. If you have not touched light, you can't dominate. And the moment a man touches light, he begins to rule over a dark world because the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. However, that light will not shine through you until you repent. And so the reason some of us decided to turn to Jesus it's not just because we've seen the danger of sin. It's because we've seen the glory. A glory that we can only walk in when we hold on to light. And so we turn away from and turn to. Let me show you something about light. About the excellency of light. Just to appetize you. Because somebody may be holding on to his girlfriend here and say, Kai, I can't leave her. I can't leave her. You think you're having pleasure. There's a realm beyond the stars. Oh! Oh! Man was created to dominate. Your elements and your propensities will not come alive until you have started the journey of dominion. When you start the journey of dominion, you will feel what it looks like to be a man. Because a man is actually not flesh. A man is God hid in dust. And so when a man begins to dominate, the things the Father feels, the things the Holy Ghost feels, the things the Son feels, you begin to feel those things. Those things cannot be taught. They are communicated. In the chambers of intimacy, a point comes where as you begin to dominate, you will look at yourself and you will be like the Christos, 
That's why Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So if you see me, you have seen Jesus. It therefore means Paul has entered the place where he could perceive the things that Jesus perceives. He could touch and experience the things that Jesus experiences. That's where the reality of life begins to break out from. Because there's an excellency that comes with light. It gives you the authority to dominate. But if you don't repent, you can't come there. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 14 to 16, this is what the Bible said. I just want to show you the excellency of light to help somebody make up his mind to repent. The Bible said God created, He said, let there be light in the firmaments of the heavens to divide the day and the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, for days and for years. Now, do you know what this means? There are no seasons except as light comes to define them. Seasons don't exist. It is light that defines experiences into seasons. So the season of poverty and the season of wealth is a divide that light creates. The season of sickness and the season of health is a divide that light creates. So seasons are actually products. They are attestations that light has come. Because the first authority of light is that light defines seasons, days and times. Are you following? Now, if this is the job of light, when you now become light, what then happens? It means your life has no seasons. You are the one who dictates what happens by time. This is why light is an instrument of dominion. So, somebody may say, this is a time of struggle and they'll be taking caution like men. What they call a time of struggle will now become the time of your greatest manifestation. That's why some of us rose up during COVID. Because when men are hiding, that's when you are shining. The flaw that destroyed the world is the same flaw that upheld the ark of Noah. A man who carries light defines his own seasons. Because the light we are operating now is greater than the sun. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 19, he said you shall no longer need the sun to give you brightness in the day, nor the moon to give you brightness at night. He said for the Lord himself shall become your everlasting light. And when that Lord himself come, came, he now said, you are the light of the world. That means I'm not just lighting you anymore. You have become the light that your world sees. And so if light defines season, it means you can choose your own seasons. You can define your own seasons. You can predict your own future. You can state your own outcome. So absolute dominion is a function of light. This is why you cannot continue to grow in darkness. Kissing somebody at a, at a junction at night when the car flashes light, you turn away. You that you shine forth. It's now, it's now taking the headlamp, the headlamp of a pojo to now reveal that you are in darkness. No. When you show up, the campus you know that a star has risen. Even the VC, we acknowledge it. You are now the season. You can enter into somebody's life who is struggling and you say, I change it. It will look like a joke, but it will change. Because you are now the season. You are the carrier. You define seasons. Because you have become like... Have you not seen? We've met people that are dying. And we tell them, this is the morning of your life. You will not die. He would have gone to the grave, but we came with light. So we changed their seasons. We've seen people going through poverty and pains. And we walk up to them and tell them, we bring wealth into your life. We change your story. And in matter of days, weeks and months, the destiny is changed because we now define seasons. And the reason we do it is not because we are apostles, it's because we carry light. We carry light. There's a light we carry that makes us define the programs of the lives of men. This is why you will do whatever it takes to not just apprehend light, but to become light. And the first is repentance. The Lord was speaking. Isaiah 58 verse 1 and 2 and here's what the Bible said he said cry aloud spare not lift up thy voice oh Jesus there are some things that are already moving in my spirit he said my, and show my people their transgression even the house of Jacob their sins this is a race of people that were separated. This is the church in the wilderness. The first ecclesia of God. 
This is supposed to be the, the Senate chamber of heaven on earth. Bringing laws to the earth realm. Shaping the civilization of the earth realm. But iniquity kept them in darkness. And so God raised the prophet and said, cry unto them. Cry unto them. They are not walking in their inheritance. Tell them that their transgression is heavy. And to make things worse, they now masqueraded in religion. Fasting religious fast, but they've not yet repented. If you study from verse 4 to verse 7, God was rebuking them. He called their fast, fleshly fast, done to glorify them. Somebody wakes up and says, I'm on a 40 days fast, and he's walking with dry lips, acting as if he's, he's like paper. Meanwhile, he's still fornicating at night. He's still lying. Exam comes. He's cheating and copying from somebody. And then he goes to the fellowship and walks like this. And says, I just canceled 21 days fast. God called that a show in the flesh. He said his genuine repentance is looking for. Cry to them. They've lost their inheritance. And in verse 8, he said, if they truly repent, something will happen to them. He said, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. And thy health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. Even the glory of the Lord shall become thy reward. And so the first way a man begins to manifest light is to come to the altar genuinely and repent. Men may not see you. You may be a fellowship secretary and you are able to masquerade the spiritual life. They give you a microphone. You say, oh, bo, bo, oh, bo, bo. They say, my God, man of fire. Whereas man of fire has something to do with somebody in the choir. You can deceive men. When the atmosphere is dry, you go and pick a Lawrence chant that originally has an anointing inside. You can sing an anointed song and you are not anointed. Because where the song was caught from, the song is a packet of anointing. And then you are singing those songs and people are, oh, sometimes it's even emotional. And then you, you come down and you carry those idols in your heart. You will never be a light. That deception will handle, happen until a demon collides with you. And he will say, Jesus will know. Paul will know. Who are you? Who are you? Where, where are you from? Do you think they speak English here? In the realms where immortals converge, you speak spirit and light. What are you saying? Who are you? And if you are not careful, they will shoot an arrow. That arrow may hide you for 50 years. Because there's an arrow that, sh that shrouds the glory of men. When some arrows are shot, that's why some fellowship presidents, the moment they graduate, they vanish. Because while they were fellowship presidents, they had three girlfriends. They were acting. They, meanwhile, these are people with apostolic callings. But because they were not genuine, arrows were shot. And the arrows were to create a darkness around them. And so for the next 40 years, you will now see fellowship president later. Hey, ah, brother Peter, fellowship president has done Okada for 10 years. Because the glory was shielded. He was on the altar talking to territorial spirits. Acting and faking things. Not knowing that these guys, they throw arrows. You know, it's not only demons we deal with. We deal with principalities and powers. When Paul was talking about demons, he said, cast them out. But when it came to principalities and powers, he said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. You have to stand in Christ. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God because here is a wrestling ground. And the only thing that will give you power over principalities is like Christ. You say, the prince of this world come to me and find that nothing. If they find something, there will be a ground of battle. And so the only way a man can manifest genuine light and affect his generation is when he genuinely repents. Iniquity cannot be brought to the altar. Your garments cannot be stained and you are doing sacred things for a spirit that is holy. It doesn't work like that. And so if you want to be a carrier of light that your generation will see, this is the first credential. Forget this thing of praying like somebody and preaching like somebody and dressing like another person. The garment is spiritual. It's not natural. You can pray and carry the pulpit or hang on the pulpit as if you are dying. You will die. 
because it's not by hanging on puppy that you emanate light. You can talk like somebody and act like him. All the gesticulation will be correct, but iniquity is in your heart. You can dress like a preacher, walk like that preacher. All the demon is correct. That's beautiful. It's called mentoring. But if there is no genuine repentance, that charade will last for a while. You will shoot out like a star and vanish. Because what we give you stamina and solidity is your, your stand on truth and purity. Because when the princes come, they will x-ray you. When you say, lift up your head, oh ye gates, they will ask you, who is the king of glory? Because these ones will ask questions. Who are you? You want to manifest light? You have to come out of the deception. He said, come out from among them. Touch not the unclean things. He said, there that bear the vessels of God, they must be holy. They must be holy. Come out from among them. The call to manifestation is a call to come out. Come out from among them. They that bear the vessels of God, they must be holy. They must be holy. They must be holy. When your garment is checked in the spirit, will there be stains? Come out! Say, for the standard of the Lord standeth sure. He said, therefore the Lord knoweth them that are his. You may call upon the name of the Lord. It doesn't mean he knows you. The vessels of God, he said, they purge themselves. That's when they become meat and qualified for the master's use. Shining is the responsibility that begins with repentance. Lying tongues, proud look, arrogant disposition, immoral lifestyle. And you say you want to shine. No, the devil knows them that are his. And God also knows them that are his. In the spirit, the dividing line is clear. It's clear. When you carry darkness and you want to cast out demon, it's a violation of kingdom protocol. It's a house divided against itself shall not stand. It says, so Satan does not fight himself. You are an agent of immorality. You are an agent of darkness. Who told you you can cast out demons? Come out from among them. When you come out, you will shine. Come out. Come out. Ha! <laughs> Mareka folia said Adidas Galatra Valinato Maradoa Sibracte Falagadidis Zede de Dina Satila Bariasta. Somebody will be clothed with a garment, the Puritan garments of fire, where the witnesses of the last day shall be decorated with the regalias of righteousness. Garments of fire that burns like flame, Satana. That when you show up, even without talking, your very appearance will be like the similitude of Yahweh himself. Tell the Lord, take me to the refineries of the Spirit. Watch me that I may be pure to stand before your holy presence and burn like the cherubs of glory. Isaiah thought it was about talking until he came to the courts of Abba and he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord and the creatures he saw there were the burning ones, the seraphims. They that shine they stand in the courts of God. And they that stand in the courts of God, they are clothed with the garment of holiness. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. And I saw also the seraphims. They had six wings. They said with two wings they flew. With two wings they covered their faces. With two wings they covered their feet. And they sang, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord. Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord. Holy, you cannot shine until you born. Until you born, you cannot shine. The brightness is tied to the intensity. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Rakas 
lila bana rakados. Thank you, Father. Somebody will be purified this morning. They will wash you with his own. They will carry you to the flames of fire. That you may be burnt, so you are not burnt. If you are not burnt, you will be burnt. And so while you are on earth, a burning must take place. So you don't go into eternity with the stains and the dents of sin. A man that is not burnt will be burnt. He said they took one of the coals from the midst of the fire and they touched him and they said, your iniquity has passed. Abrakatone, avalakatua talagata. Ah! Hey, yeah, 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 hey, hey, yeah, 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 when men begin to shine, they shine because they are burning. And when men begin to burn, iniquity we have no chance. This was what happened in the days of the apostles. They saw men shining and they said, Barnabas sold his land. He brought the proceeds to the apostles' feet and they called him the son of consolation. And he said, Ananias also came and stole him some of the money. And Peter said, why have Satan entered your heart? We don't shine, we're born to shine. We're born to shine. We're born to shine. And immediately he dropped dead. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Hear this. The era we've come into, evil ministers will be judged. Evil ministers. Those that covered iniquity on the altar, oh, their shame will be their promotion. Many will be rejected. Many will be kicked out from the boundaries of the sanctuary because when the fire comes judgment must begin in the household of faith that's when we have come shining is not without burning and burning is not without judgment and so when you repent you are purged but when you refuse to repent you are condemned tell him to refine you this morning Bakida Tani Gazosa as a Sadida Napata Gadis. I don't know what you are struggling with, but tonight is your night. You will drop those idols, you will drop those secret iniquities, you will drop them. A fire is coming now to purge and to purify. Ah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> when men begin to shine, it's a time to tremble. God encountered Moses and sent him to Egypt to deliver the Israelites. While Moses was on his way, God came to kill him because he was not circumcised. In the day when men shine, the judgment of God is closed because it is the jealousy of God that preserves the harvest. Lift your hands toward heaven.
you, most of you will receive a baptism now. The baptism of fire. That's what purifies the jewel. That it may shine to a generation. Father, everyone here with an open heart, ready to drop idols and ready to repent. Especially those with callings, prophetic callings, apostolic callings, governmental callings. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now I ask for the fire, the fire that purifies. Holy Ghost, purge now, purge now, purge now, purge now, purge now. Help them, ushers. Yare de Vecatonia, Azagata, Paradia, Setatatias, Malatuane, Dagas, Peraro, Sagatina, Patadas, Tatea, Veredetaka, Matenia, Matalush, Adida, Azacade, Verele.